the criminal justice system, the people pimps, addicts, thieves, bums, winos, girls who can't keep an address and men who don't care are represented by two separate yet equally important groups. A cop, a flatfoot, a bull, a dick, John Law, you're the fuzz, the heat, you're poison, you're trouble, you're bad news. These are their stories. A near disaster avoided at the Rose Parade. The Rose Parade, which is that piece of Americana that rolls around every New Year's Day. A driver, a woman in her 20s, rammed her car into a barricade. What? That's right. It happened at the corner of Colorado Boulevard and Chester Avenue. Happened at 10 a.m. She was traveling northbound on Chester toward the Rose Parade route, Kim. Mm. And even though the barrier ramming occurred just a few blocks from a protest at Lake in Colorado that briefly did interrupt the Rose Parade, the two incidents were not related, say authorities. The woman attempted to ram through the barricades. Had she been successful, she would have injured numerous parade watchers. Apparently, she was uh, she's arrested for assault with a deadly weapon, which they do, and um, two off-duty cops, not from the area of Pasadena, which is where the Rose Parade is, assisted in detaining the driver before the Pasadena uh, PD wrapped her up. Now, I think in the old days, and I don't know what you'd consider the old days, but not that long ago, there would have been no barriers. I feel in the new world, you have to set these barriers up everywhere you have to set them up around farmers markets you have to set them up around arts and crafts exhibitions and you have to set them up certainly around something as high profile as the rose parade they did and those barriers did their job why she rammed it still unclear a major announcement in court not for the show so we cannot play the major announcement um Announcement. The appeals court now allowing California to ban guns in most public places. A federal appeals court halted a lower court's block on the law, which, again, the law prohibits firearms in certain places like playgrounds, libraries. So the federal appeals court, this just happened over the weekend allowing California's ban on carrying firearms in most public places to take effect in 2024. This is one of those laws that was to take effect in the new year and now will. State law, uh, it's a Senate Bill 2. It sets several restrictions on gun ownership. Newsom approved it in September, but the U.S. District Court for the Central District of Columbia had blocked enforcement of the law in December. They said... This is the judge, Cormac Carney is the judge's name in the U.S. District Court for the Central District of Columbia. The judge had said that the ban on guns in most public places would unconstitutionally, quote, deprive citizens of their right to bear arms. You know, in the United States of guns, we always have to be able to be strapped whenever we want to. The judge wrote in his ruling to grant an injunction that the ban is sweeping and repugnant to the Second Amendment mm. and openly defiant of the Supreme Court. That was the original judge who said, hey, you can't restrict carrying guns in public places. And the reality is that this would have changed life in California pretty dramatically. The appeals court, though, said quote, that it will, quote, allow our common sense gun laws to remain in place while we appeal the district court's dangerous ruling. That's, um, I mean, I'm with the Senate, the, the bill's author of the, the you know, uh, State Senator Anthony Portentino, he's a Democrat, and he said, quote, clearly Californians will be safer when SB2 becomes law. The restrictions are in the best interest of the public. I mean, how could you possibly disagree with that? But this uh, Second Amendment jihadism is out of control, as you know, in this country. But in any case, for the moment, that appeals court ruling really does change things. And this person wishes 
they'd had a gun so that more people could get the point at Chipotle. Oh, no. That's right. Chipotle worker is beaten by a furious... These customers are furious Mm-mm. over an extra chicken charge. <laughs> Jamel Williams, 36, <laughs> and Kayla Pyle, 34. They should have known better. No. They attacked the worker following a dispute over an extra charge. Enraged they were, Kim. Yeah. And they learned that their order of extra chicken would cost more. Everything costs more, people. Get them line. If you want extra something like chicken, it's going to cost more. Right. I mean, I don't get how that's, you know, breaking news to you. Do they not live in California? It's absolutely... I mean- yeah, it's get the memo. Why are you yelling? Because when a 20 year old worker at Chipotle is just doing their job, yeah. saying that your request for extra chicken is going to cost more, a heated argument ensued. And the worker was allegedly so upset with the interaction that she decided to end her shift early from the Indian Land Eatery near Charlotte. She went home around 9 p.m. As the worker headed for the door, one of the perpetrators of this entire thing, one of the customers, is six feet, three inches tall and 300 pounds, came at her from the other side, pushed her to the floor and began hitting her, pulling her hair and jerking her around. Then the other person jumped in. Customers could be heard yelling at the attackers to stop. That's awful. It's pretty awful, exactly. It, and and on its face, it's disgusting. And I'm glad they didn't have guns. There and you how go. How much do you get paid to work at Chipotle? Right, and that's, exactly. I mean, is that worth it? To put yourself in the public, in the middle of the public with crazy people all over? Gosh. It's, well, they ran, you know. Yeah. Uh, but store video and uh, video taken by witnesses identified, you know, helped identify who they were. So, I mean, it's just awful, but that's what's going on. You know, happy new year. Meantime, this is sort of grim, but this is again in the United States of guns, father and son arrested after the 10 year old shoots another boy with a stolen gun. Oh, come on. 53 year old guy and his 10 year old son arrested over the weekend in Sacramento. He shot another kid using a stolen gun that he'd found in his father's car. Good news. Out of Chile, where I've just come from, what was, well, how's the best way to say that, Tony? From from where I've just come? Isn't that how you would say it, Tony? Thanks, Tony. Um, from whence from, I just arrived. Oh. <laughs> no. From whence? Maybe. No. Well, all right. Uh, anyway. The... Byline comes from Santiago, Chile. Chile's oldest and most overcrowded prison had they, and there's some disagreement on this, uh, had a rat problem, they thought, and they brought in some cats to get rid of the rat problem. That's at least one story. There are others who say this: these cats just started showing up spontaneously. But whatever the situation and however the cats got there, The cats have transformed this gross, overcrowded, horrible prison into a place where the inmates have fallen in love with the cats. What can you tell us about the scene? (laughs) The scene used to be pretty rough, Larry, but the inmates have fallen in love with the felines. What can you tell us about the scene? So they're, they're now therapy cats at the jail? In a sense, they are. They are mm-hmm. our companions, said Carlos Nunez, a prisoner showing off a two-year-old tabby that he named Feta, or Ugly. That's her name. Uh, he's behind prison bars, but Feta comes and visits him, Kim. Oh. While caring for multiple cats during his 14-year sentence for home burglary, Carlos Nunez says that he's discovered their special essence, Compared with, say, a cellmate or even a dog, he says. A cat, this is a quote, 
makes you worry about it, feed it, take care of it, give it special attention. When we were outside and free, we never did this. We discovered this in here. What can you tell us about the scene? The scene's transformed, Larry. These prisoners have fallen in love with the cats. The cats are probably like, what did we do wrong to end up in prison? Come on. The cats seem happy. You can, uh, Tony will put up a pic of the cat. Yeah, they're being in the arms of, of the uh, a little bit of love. Yeah, there you go. See, prisons are hostile places," said uh, um, the warden of the prison. <laughs> By the way, the warden of the prison is a woman, which is uh, it's nice to see you women breaking into the uh, prison warden business. That's why there's cats in prison. See what happens when the ladies are in charge. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Prisons are hostile places," she says. So, of course, when you see there's an animal giving affection and generating these positive feelings, it logically causes a change in behavior, a change in mindset. So that's going on in the most notorious prison in Santiago, Chile. And finally, I finish Law and Disorder with this. A DUI driver in Los Angeles was involved in one of those freeway pursuits, which are the mother's milk of local news in yeah. Southern California. <laughs> It spans several Los Angeles communities and, uh, and, and you know, went on different freeways and involved multiple agencies. And then the driver stopped not to surrender, but to get more gas, everybody. That's right. You know, sometimes you are in a police pursuit. You need we have video off. now. Tony is putting it up. The uh, driver stopping at a... Uh, Thanks, Tony. <laughs> Got to put that credit card in, get the gas. <laughs> this is wild. It's like this is the new kind of freeway pursuit. And here come the cops, oh. but the cops closed in too late. Yeah, they did. You would have thought they would more more on top of that. Yeah, it was... Uh, they let him tank up. And Just, then they, uh, then they closed what? in. Just yeah. imagine being the guy next to him because everyone had it on TV. So he, all these helicopters are above you. And it's like the cops I don't understand. How can the cops be so far behind? It was truly uh, a pursuit which does demand an explanation. I mean, even the media saw the guy at the gas station. Really? <laughs> like the news chopper is there before the cops? Yeah. It's definitely one to, and if you're just listening to the show, you should go to the YouTube and uh, check it out. And it is really something to, to see. Connecticut middle school music teacher leads us off on Law and Disorder Part Deux. Mm -hmm. That music teacher now on leave and facing charges. Uh-oh, what happened? Told a student, I'll rip your face off. Uh-oh. Wow. Why are you yelling? Somebody got Mr. What's his name angry. And you know, when you're a kid, sometimes that you just have like that on your mind. I'm going to get under this teacher's skin. Absolutely. This is a Connecticut middle school teacher. He's on leave facing charges. He told a 10 year old student, I'll rip your face off. Why are you yelling? He was called to discipline the child on the bus. God, the bus, those bus rides can be so brutal. This is where kids really go nuts. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's literally a, a charge of, he's 49 years old. There he is. Looks a little like Dr. Drew. You know, that guy, Dr. Drew, <laughs> don't you think he looks like, uh, Dr. Yeah, Drew? Little... I, can, I can see what you're saying. Yeah. No, I don't know. I, I, I uh, anyway, he's, uh, he's been hauled in on charges. Joe uh, Box and little Anthony. You know, he does not look like Joe Box or he, maybe Mo Box, Mo Black's brother. Mo Black's brother, Fat Andy. He looks a little like Fat Andy. Um, Pending this investigation, he's been charged with disorderly conduct and second-degree threatening. Oh. He's placed on paid administrative leave, which is my favorite kind of leave. Yeah. He was a music teacher at Mansfield Middle School. That's kind of sad, actually. You want to hear what happened? Yeah. All right. This is a quote from the complaint. On November 28th, district leadership informed the community at the school that a middle school staff member had been placed on paid administrative leave pending an investigation. The Connecticut State Police have informed the district that the staff member has been arrested related to the incident on the bus. They'll continue to cooperate 
with the appropriate authorities, say the Mansfield Public School officials, suggesting that Johnson was called on a bus to address a student who was showing a two-foot stick to the other kids. The bus driver asked the students to toss the stick out the window, but they reportedly refused and became belligerent, Kim. Yeah, <laughs> as 10-year-olds are wont to do, yes. Yeah, so they call in this music teacher, the enforcer. Why are you yelling? <laughs> got Johnson, and he said to the offending 10-year-old, if you talk back again, I'll rip um, your face off. Yeah, no, I can't say that. The student reported the incident to their mother, Mm -hmm. who reviewed the footage with the principal. He was released on $10,000 bond, this guy Johnson was, the teacher, and set to appear in court on January 8th. That's oh. what we call a bad day at work. That's <laughs> a tough way to start the new year, I would say, for sure. What yeah. he's got going here no. is a situation. That's for sure. Eric yeah. says, when I was in high school, the rugby coach subbed for the math teacher once and told one kid, sit down or I'll break your effing fingers. And it was the quietest class from that point forward. I can't imagine back <laughs> when I was a kid ever uh, responding to any kind of threat like that by calling your mom. And my mom would have said, well, you, what were you doing acting up like that? Right. It's like the tough kid with the stick went home and cried to mommy is exactly, yeah, exactly. what happened. Right. Most bullies, <laughs> that's the way they do it. Right. Um. An Alabama woman was shouting, happy holidays. That's nice. It is nice. Why are you yelling? Then she robbed the jewelry store. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Oh, no, no. The great thing is that she put the two things together in one act. Heather Denise Wright, she ran when the cops arrived to a Lowe's in North Carolina so she already had, I think, a uh, record. But then she supposedly targeted this store 10 miles north of Birmingham. She walked into the store wearing a face mask and said, Happy holidays. I don't want to hurt y'all, but I am. <laughs> and she began discharging bear spray at everyone oh no yeah oh no she was not a nice lady what yeah prompting Happy the holidays, store owner mm -hmm. the, the store owner then started to shoot at her i didn't have any choice he says once she started spraying the bear spray i didn't know what was going to come next so she was wrapped up Arrested. Y'all can all go to hell, and I'm going back to Texas. And maybe that's maybe that's what's going to wow. happen with her. Yeah. Uh, but happy holidays, uh, as they say. And finally, we go to Oakland. An Oakland woman targeted three times in two weeks by criminals. It's crazy. Three incidents in two weeks, Kim. And what, targeting what the same person. Not cool. You got to figure something else is going on, right? I mean, what with the same person being targeted three, uh, 74 year old mother in law had cars purposely rammed into her garage in North Oakland twice, and she was carjacked in between. It began on December 11th. A photo shows that her garage was damaged after the impact, 63rd Street and Hillgas Avenue. She called Oakland cops and. She Ooh, says the cops there? just told her to, the cops just told her to file an incident report. They didn't come out. They didn't do anything, she said. Oh. Somebody had crashed through her car. That was on December 11th. Then just 3 days later, the woman got into her Mercedes, which was parked on the street because of the garage, and that's when a second car pulled up. Somebody got out of the car, opened up her car door, yanked her out, threw her out on the street and drove off in the car. But it was Berkeley police, not Oakland, who first arrived at that scene after being summoned by a Berkeley parking control officer who happened to be driving through the neighborhood. But that wasn't it. Then someone rammed into her garage again. Oh, man. She called the Oakland cops and was put on hold for 20 minutes, she says. She's not particularly happy with the cops. They told her that unless she was in danger of imminent bodily harm... They couldn't do anything but to file a report online. That is, you can see, the damage the second time. Wow. So the city councilman from Oakland reached out to the cops after this entire thing. An officer did reach 
her, went out to her place yeah. as well. They are looking at two things. Uh, cop response, I don't know if it would have mattered. But uh, also, why was this lady targeted this way? So it is a bit of an, would you say, uh, an investigative mystery? Well, what has to happen for the police to respond to you? Like, how badly do you have to be victimized? That's a good question, too. Right. And I think that's a question that's rolling around uh, as well. Uh, I have to wrap up, right? Yeah, I can't that's it. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. That's Law and Disorder for today. Tune in again next time for more Law and Disorder on The Mark Thompson Show. All right. That's it. Let's roll. Hey, let's be careful out there. Hi, it's Mark. And I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell, you'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped. And please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.